Hello everybody. Welcome to the course Knowledge Modeling and Semantic Technology, ET60019. I am Plavan Kumar Bhumik, an assistant professor in the Center for Education and Technology. To start with, let us talk about how human being as a society has left other spaces in the race of taking over the world. Among many other things, there are two key aspects which I think that are very important in this concern is the way the human being can store knowledge, process knowledge and the other thing is how human being can collaborate with each other. I think these are the two driving forces that have really powered human society to take over this world. Now, if we talk about the processing and representation of the knowledge, the there are many uh, ways in which the knowledge that has been acquired through the generation they were stored. But if we think about internet, and its role to transform the knowledge society in a greater way. So what we can do while the internet was invented, we can store huge amount of knowledge and make it accessible to any individual in the world. And that brings us to the second point. We can collaboratively create knowledge and you can share knowledge with each other and that's how the advancement in the knowledge society or society as a whole has really happened. So this course would be a story of the internet but a different kind of internet. If we think about the internet we know or we used to know say 10 years back it is a set of documents that are floating around over the internet attached to different web servers and you can use various means like search engines or just specifying the url to know what is there in this in that document or a particular topic Now, this course will tell you how this traditional way of thinking the internet to be a set of passive documents has really changed. The notion has really changed and the internet, the documents, they are not really passive. They are becoming to be entities on their own and they are powering very meaningful applications that we see today and possibly we will see in future. So welcome to the different kind of web or internet called the semantic web. So this course will deal with the technologies that powers this special kind of web and the architecture of realizing the dream of making web meaningful and intelligent. So as we are talking about internet, let us take a look at the history. I think that will be a good starting point. So let us go back to 1969 where the first internet was or web was established between four institutes, SRI Stanford Research Institute, UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles, UCSB, University of California, Santa Barbara, and University of Utah. I think the first message was sent from UCLA to SRI and the teams at, the, at both the end, they were with their telephones. And from the UCLA, the first letter that was sent to SRI was S, 
sorry L then the second and the telephone rang to the other end what did he receive the answer came like L the second letter that was sent is O and the third letter was supposed to be sent to be G but the system crashed but that was the birth of a new age new era which is the era of the internet and thanks to the architects like JCR Lick Leader, Robert Taylor and Larry Roberts they were very instrumental to connect different computers that are situated in different geographic locations and sending message to each other communicating to each other gradually this uh, web that internet the different other servers they were added to the internet and by 1977 you can see the uh, two coasts of eways they were com connected in in a set of complex connections right now the first milestone in this evolution i think is how we can set up a server and store a set of documents in that server and get access to these documents from the other computers in the network i think that is the first milestone in this evolution so the internet is the first key technology in the first generation uh, the internet was accessed in a very tedious way of course you have a uh, command from open the terminal then uh, connect to the remote computer with some command and then you can retrieve uh, the data from the file system from the remote computer then you can download that from your uh, from the remote computer to, to your computer and then you can read the file you can see that you, you have to do a lot of stuff to get access to the document but the story changed and i will say dramatically with the birth of www at cern and the main architect of this world were two uh, persons tim berner lee and robert kailio the particular idea that uh, was instrumental in designing www is hypertext though it was there uh, earlier but this was adopted in uh, in connecting the document on the internet and i think that is a great idea that even powers the internet today right or the web today and there are different other uh, inventions like tcp ip protocol uh then http protocol hypertext uh, uh hyper hypertext terminal protocol then html and then we have the first web server and we have the first website now you can see that the internet has done transformed by connecting the documents from one server to the other server right so there are interconnections between the documents and that created another layer on top of internet is the, it, that is www and now we can see that this www is a huge graph beyond imagination so it's really huge and uh, there are so many complex connections it's really hard to visualize now you have the documents in the web servers in the internet or www how to get access to that those and of course we are using web browsers to get access to those documents you can type in the url uh, in the web browser and you get access to the document right and it started with a very naive uh, common prompt uh, common prompt based browsers then a bit sophisticated though primitive and finally we have something like firefox chrome microsoft microsoft edge they can do many things for you so you have got the web browser now it's back in 
say 70s or 80s it was it was or say 90s it, it was uh, not really very easy to get access to the documents so what you have to do you, you have to make a list of websites you are interested in basically the urls and you have to type in those urls in the web uh, browser and you get access to the documents so uh, then gradually the uh, web companies they started to build directories that will list down the different important urls or websites for you for different domains so one project i, I can mention in this respect is yahoo directory where the domains are pretty much categorized and in each category you have got different urls right but that is also not that convenient because uh, it, it was a kind of uh, uh, the choice of the designer of the directory which you wanted to include or which one to not but you, you can see that is not really user centered design right? so the user can ask for any information from any website and there came the search engines right search engines can take a query and get you the list of results so these these are pretty common in today's world but uh, this was not that common in back back in 1990s so you have got yahoo alta vista then google and these two guys they changed the entire landscape of search engines so we have got the search engines now this at this point i'll stop the uh, forward movement of in this evolution process to look back what we can do in today's world so you have plenty of materials on the web or the internet many documents in almost all uh, documents in almost all kinds of topics you can think of right so you use a search engine to uh, find the documents of your interest right or you know a particular url you can directly access that url basically these are the kind of things we can do and on top of that uh, we can also contribute to the internet by uh, through using social medias like facebook twitter and others right you can take a picture and post that in instagram or you can you, you are listen you are listening to a nice music and you can share that in in some social platform so more or less we uh, we can do many many things but let us see whether we have got all the things to satisfy some complex needs so let's take an example which is uh, related to covid-19 and in, you know this this is a pandemic of this generation and really we are struggling a lot for, for this pandemic and let us see uh, what kind of requirement that we we can think of while we talk about the fight against covid-19 so what we have for covid-19 there are many places we can get information for example uh, transportation network is a very important aspect for any pandemic for dealing with any pandemic right so basically this transportation network can tell you uh, at which point you, you can break the transportation network to stop the uh, virus spreading from one part of the world to the other part so the transportation network or information about the transportation is very much important uh, either locally or globally the genome sequence of uh, the virus is very much important to know uh, to uh, i to for for different purpose so either you can think of uh, uh, inventing a vaccine for this uh, virus or or or, or, or uh, some other purpose there are different strains different proteins that uh, and and the information for those are, are present in different websites there are information related to vaccines uh, which countries are doing what so 
you, you can get information from other different websites now you can see that we are talking about uh, websites uh, different websites this transportation network they will not keep track of the genome sequence so the uh, the virologists they can keep track of the genome sequence but they may not directly store those in their website right now the statistics, statistics different statistics are coming from different levels uh, maybe either from the uh, state level from the national level from the global level and they are coming from different places from different websites okay there, there are plenty of news articles or news items that are being published on different aspects of this pandemic and different policies are being taken either uh, related to uh, using mask or school closer organization closer so these are all there in different websites and finally uh, which is very important is uh, the set of publications that are coming out of the research related to covid 19 and that will power different uh, aspects like taking different policies uh, inventing the vaccine so the point that I'm trying to make here is that the there are plenty of information available over the internet because uh, those information have been published on the internet in a distributed way, right? So the organization who are taking care of transportation network, they are not really thinking about, say, inventing a vaccine, right? Or uh, the nation, nation in the national level while taking a policy of uh, um, on school closure, the government website is not really thinking about uh, uh, sequencing or putting the uh, genome sequence data on their uh, websites. So the point is, we have various kinds of or huge amount of data to deal with this situation, but they are fragmented they are not viewed by a person in interest in an integrated way so for example if you think about a virologist who is trying to or the team of virologists who are trying to invent the vaccine right so the research papers they are coming from different places the uh, uh, genome sequences they have been placed in different websites the real the information about proteins protein structures and others they are coming from different websites and this team they have to go to different places to gather information and then uh, think about what to do with that information right and i think that is the challenge the availability of data is not the challenge because as the data is getting generated in a huge scale we can have we have the access to the data but the challenge the key challenge lies in how we can integrate these data to have a coherent view about the state of the affair right so you have got different transport networks uh, mm, so for example from data.world world transportation so you can see that they have got different structures different way of organizing the data and even the data is in unstructured in a textual form so the genome sequence they are coming from different websites and they do not talk about the other things of course uh, there are information related to vaccines again they are in different websites and the statistics they are available from different places but they can follow multiple styles for example the government of india they are following a style that is different from government of uh, uh, uk and that will that might be different from government of island iceland and on top of that added to the complexity is that the data can be published or the information can be published in multiple languages so this is the statistics website of uh, the german government you can see that all uh, information they are presented in uh, german language uh, this is from indonesia web uh, government and this is from uh, new zealand uh, netherlands uh, government so you can see that Data is there, but in multiple languages. 
and there are different news and announcements coming from different websites uh, and social medias right and again they are in unstructured form so they are not structured though the, the different information are conveyed there they are not uh, mm, available for the machines to process so if you can write a program that can uh, look through all the documents and bring you the summary of it it is really hard for the uh, program to do that because the documents are published in different languages different styles the text might be the information can be structured or unstructured so you can see the uh, scale of the challenge that we are having with us so you have got a um, huge number of research publications that came out uh, and related to COVID-19. So the point is data is there and I think uh, the data we can see over the internet or the web is much less than the actual data that individual organizations they are having, right? So simply because the websites, they let us see the data which they want, but maybe which the, the, the data we want, they are hidden. They, they are not available to us. So we, we do not, it may not, it may, may be the case that we ca cannot see the things that we want to see. So what we need, we need to have an integrated view of the resources of our interest, right? So how we can do that? So in the technical term, what we, what we want to do so there are different web applications. Maybe there are some uh, database. I'll not say uh, traditional relational database or any database software. This data can be stored in files or in, in any database system or in some structured form, unstructured form. It can be any. But the point is the web application is accessing this data and making a part of it available to the user. So the user they have to go to the individual application and gather data right so what is the model of resource consumption on the internet so if the user has a query the user will be looking into the search engine through the search engine into multiple documents now these multiple documents they can have diverse style they can have uh, different purposes they can be presented in different languages and they can follow different knowledge schema. So all the information that are coming from this diverse set of documents, they have to be processed and, in and integrated mentally. So we are performing a mental integration while we are looking for some information over the internet. Some information can be straightforward you ask for say date of birth of say Rabindranath Tagore, you, you, you get it instantaneously. But if you have a complex query, for that you have to uh, look into different websites, different documents uh, and uh, mine data from there and mentally integrate different aspects of the topic together to find the crystallized answer, right? And as the user of the internet we all know that this process can be sometimes long and tedious right sometimes it might be very easy you can get the information that you require maybe uh, very easily but many cases specifically for the complex queries uh, the user might find uh, it, it hard to get access to the particular answer <coughs> so the question is can we delegate the mental integration task to the programs? So what kind of requirements we need to have if we want to have this? So the first requirement that we need to have that the programs or the agents or the scripts on the internet, they should be able to interpret the data that, that, that is there over the internet, scattered over the internet. But you know what is the problem with this approach? at this current point of time the internet contains the web pages that are unstructured and noisy 
so the pages they are mix of different um, images uh, videos you have text maybe you have some structured data as well but in general they are unstructured and noisy and that's why they are not processable by machine they are not understandable by programs that is the difficulty the second problem is that this the data processing they should be user centered so the program should know what user wants and with respect to that the program would be looking for the appropriate data and it should be independent of the presentation of the data so it should not be dependent on whether the uh, coronavirus data or the statistics has been uh, presented uh, in a different way in uh, say government of india website or government of india uh, government of uk website right so whatever be the presentation the data should be processable by the machine and that should be presented to the user uh, in the way user wants but the problem with this is as we have discussed that the web pages they can follow diverse styles they find can be having different purposes or they can be represented in different languages and the third but i think the most important uh, requirement for this integration to happen is that the data they should be linked with each other they can be linked with each other right so i i'll tell you in the later part what benefit we will have if we can have the ability to link one piece of data from one end to the other end so i can give the example that you have taken the case of uh, covid 19 or the fight against the covid 19 so let's say one website is publishing the uh, genome sequence data of uh, covid 19 uh, uh, virus coronavirus so if they can link a particular data about the genome sequence with a research paper that has discussed about this uh, uh, genome sequence so that will be of greater help to for example the virologist so they can relate the discussions that happened with on this coronavirus strain but the problem is in with today's architecture of internet or the traditional web is that we cannot hyperlink data though we can hyperlink document so what do we want we want the data to be hyperlinked in the way we can hyperlink the documents so how to achieve the delegation so that let us think about the stage 1 of this uh, delegation the stage 1 of this delegation is basically the human and machine if they can collaborate but how will they collaborate so if we think about the traditional web or simply the web of documents so now one will be using these terms uh, synonymously synonymously the traditional web or web of documents or hyperlink documents so these will be uh, more or less uh, referring to the same thing now this web of documents they are human processable so they are amenable to uh, consumption by the human being right one can go to the page and read through the page and understand a page right and what we want to have is the interlinking of concrete entities in the world and that gives us the web of data and with the expectation and of course with the design such that this web of data is processable by machines by algorithms by programs and the collaboration happens when the human can relate the documents with the appropriate data item in this web of data right 
So, for example, you have this uh, SARS-CoV-2 uh, as an entity in this uh, in this wave of data, and there is a document that that is talking about say genome sequence of uh, say coronavirus. So, what one can do, one can explicitly say that this document contains an entity whose description is given in the wave of data. So that's how the human and machine, they are collaborating with each other to make more sense out of the documents that are, that, that used to be only human uh, processable. And adding this layer on top of this, what we are really doing, we are converting, we, we are converting the documents to be machine processable as well. So, in addition to uh, having them human processable, we are having them also to be machine processable. Now, one can say that the mashup applications are already doing this. So, what are mashup applications? So, the mashups are the applications which can integrate data from different sources and present those data in a coherent view to the users. So, you, you can take the example of Worldometer, which is one of the uh, popular source of statistics about the COVID-19 cases and different other related statistics. Right? So, what they do, they uh, consult individual websites, uh, specifically from the government websites of different countries and integrate the data to provide a global level statistics as well as local level statistics. And I think similarly, the, the WHO websites, they are uh, uh, having a similar kind of dashboard, right? In general, you can have uh, different mashup applications like social media mashup where uh, the application can uh, manage different uh, social media profile, uh, the social media profile of a particular user from different social medias like uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram in a single place, right? So, you can uh, think of a booking website uh, where you can book for a flight, book for a hotel, reserve a hotel or book for some travel uh, sightseeing options. So, those can be done in a single place, right? So, these are massive applications. So, what do they do? So, you have a database which is being maintained by one organization or, or, or a website. They expose this data or maybe a part of this data through a set of API. So, on top of having the website, they are also exposing the data with the help of a set of APIs, application programming interfaces, right? Now, this massive application can consult different APIs, harvest data from these APIs and integrate them together to provide a coherent view to the users, right? So, this is a very classic or nice example of how data can be integrated from multiple websites and different websites are doing, doing that different applications are doing that. Now, the question is, uh, do mashup applications address the delegation question? So, the answer would be, well, well, to some extent, yes, but they do this in an ad hoc manner. So, why I am saying this? So, first of all, this mashup applications, they harvest data with the help of either some web services like APIs that I have told earlier or simply web scraping. So they go to the website, read the document and then scrape the data programmatically, right? Now, as you can see that uh, the, the websites, they can have different styles, different forms, different languages. The program that one can write to scrape one web page from a website may not work for another web page in another website because the style can be completely different, right? 
and of course this the sources they, they expose different apis the parameters in the apis they can be different and they follow different uh, or diverse business logic as well but the most notorious problem in this approach is that you need to do a schema mapping between the schema in which the data is organized in the source website and the schema that you are maintaining in your in your mashup application and in most of the scenarios these two schemas are really different and you can see that if you have say n number of websites from which your mashup application is harvesting data you need to have n schema mapping programs and the schema mapping programs in in some cases might not be very straightforward they might be very complex so let's say you have written you have taken care of all those right you have uh, understood the business logic of the api uh, individual apis you understood the parameters you have written all the webscaping programs and you have written this schema ma mapping programs as well but what happens if the api specification is changed or the document structure is changed so the mashup application has to do a lot of redo of of these programs all these programs right so they have to implement the different modules that uh, take care of different things and you know that this maintenance would be a huge overhead because you need to write a program even there is a very small change in the source website or source api and doing all these then also the presented presentation of the data is controlled by the massive application not by the user right so how to achieve this delegation stage 2 is that we need to have a standard way for exposing the information in the web of data so that we can have a common language to talk so there are many important aspects that have been presented in this small sentence so the first important thing is standard way whenever we talk about the standard so that establishes a protocol that would be followed by almost all the websites so you can think of this html if you if you are writing if you are trying to publish a document over the internet you have to follow the language html so that is the standard that we are talking about so the question is html is a standard for publishing documents on the website but what would be the standard for publishing a piece of data on the web of data so that that is the first question we need to answer and the second question that we need to answer is that as we are trying to think about programs that can process the data programmatically or automatically they should be represented in a common language the data should be represented in a common language so that a single program can work for different websites right so you will unfold all these while we will be talking about uh, uh, the architecture of the semantic web gradually so these are all very uh, uh, involved things and there are many standards many uh, languages in which we can achieve this task but here i am trying to put forward the requirement that this is what we want right and i guess these are the most important things in in this particular course now what do we mean by standard so for that let us see uh, what makes the current document web to work or ww to work so the first uh, point that is driving the inter uh, internet or the world wide web is the 
triple S slogan. Anyone can say anything about any topic. So no one is left behind. If you want to publish something over the internet, you can do that. Right. And it is very participatory. So one can just create a document, give one URL to that, and then it is over the internet. One can access, one can have access to it. And the third thing is tolerance. And I think that that is uh, the main driving force behind the exponential growth of the internet. So wh what is the tolerance that we are talking about? That there is no, practically no control over the document quality or its availability. So varying from different, uh, 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 some, some uh, documents on the web, for example, Wikipedia, while you are writing one Wikipedia article, you want to try to publish that, that would be uh, moderated by a set of moderator in Wikipedia. But in general, if you have some idea about a topic, you can write a blog or you can write uh, the HTML document on your own and publish that in your own website. So very little control uh, we have over the document quality. So, of course, there will be possibility of junk contents. There are many junk content, contents over the internet and uh, you cannot really guarantee that all the websites will be accessible all the times, right? So, you can expect this 404 not found uh, for different websites or documents, right? But even having all these, there are documents of good quality on the internet because whole world is contributing to this internet and that's why we are having uh, an exponential growth in the document web and you know this it's an organic system it is uh, kind of evolving on its own and the network effect is uh, being uh, in, being into play here so someone creates a document and publishes it in the web so this is a very traditional scenario and what happens next let's say someone others say discover it the document and um, they just link it to, link to it now as this document is getting linked by more document it is becoming to be more important and well known in the uh, in the internet on the internet and i think uh, and you know that this uh, exactly this is the kind of uh, uh, um, information that is being exploited by google using this google page rank algorithm which is powering the search uh, technique of google now the sum of the pages they become important as di different people different websites they are connecting to it linking to it and even that the user or the author or the creator of the document did not expect that it would be uh, that much popular it becomes so because uh, it is having a network effect but what do we think about the unlucky websites it might so happen that you have written a very good quality document but with the stroke of luck you, you do, do not have uh, much access to it much link to it that and, and consequently your document will not be that popular and as it is not that popular it will not be ranked on the top list by the search engines and as it is not so it will not be discovered by many people and you can see that the negative network effect will be coming to play for these unlucky websites right so what all this discussion has to do with web of data so the answer is we should be able to do all these things with web of data as we can do with web of documents so we should be able to publish the data and make it known on the web of document web of uh, data right now you cannot really take an ad hoc approach so you can do this. So for example, you, you create one XML document. You can create an XML document which can uh, store that data in a very structured way. 
and you can publish the document on the web but that will not be a standard way so the tags in the xml that you have defined they might be uh, defined by you and will not be understood by the other organization or other program so that is not a standard way and we can think of uh, having a similar approach that we have taken to the documents like attaching one URI to the documents we can do the same thing here we can attach URIs to the data to make it identifiable so what is the first condition or first uh, requirement of, of linking one data item with the other item the link data item should be identified and we can use the same infrastructure of web of document basically the uh, uh, URIs or URLs and we can attach them to the data also or the entities also now if we can follow this then we can use these URIs to link one data item with the other items other data items but in doing so you should not or the designer of the web of the data should not force the application to make very targeted developments right so as we were doing in the mass massive applications we were doing very targeted developments for every website from which the application was harvesting data so that should not happen so you need to think of standard way of representing the data in the web of data so that the generic programs can work for data in different organizations or published by different organizations and for that we need to take a very generic and standard approach and if we do so likewise the network effect played a very huge role in the case of web of documents the network effect will play a role in web of data as well so coming back to uh, the question of how do we fight against uh, covid 19 pandemic so these are two objectives that i have uh, taken from this our world in data.org and these two points pretty much summarizes what we need to have really so the first point says that our first ob objective says to provide reliable global and open data and research on how the covid-19 pandemic is spreading what impact the pandemic has how we can make progress against the pandemic and whether the measures co countries are taking are successful or not you can see that it is kind of touching upon different aspects of this pandemic but the point that i'm trying to stress on is provide reliable global and open data and the second objective is build an infrastructure that allows research colleagues and everyone to who is interested to navigate and understand the data and research so in order to provide this reliable and global and open data you need to provide an infrastructure by which people can do that in the first place and in the second place the infrastructure should also allow to allow the researchers or the stakeholders to get access to the data and develop meaningful applications or solutions right so we understand the necessity of linking data with each other and putting this layer of web, web of data on top of the web of documents now there is the third stage i think a uh, very crucial stage of delegating the mental integration process to the machines so the third stage of how to achieve the delegation so let us take this query animal that use sonar but are neither bats nor dolphins so whenever we start the query like animals that use sonar so so first thing that will come into mind that the bats bats they use sonar but 
you have another clause like they are neither bad so bats they are ruled out who else can be the dolphins but it is saying uh, you cannot take dolphins as well so what should be the answer now what you can see that while i am analyzing the query i am just playing the role of the program so how will the program process this uh, query right so the program is doing certain inference based on some abstract knowledge so the bat is an animal and bats they do use sonar so what we are try what we are doing here so bat is an entity in our web of data and we are classifying bats under the uh, under the class animal similarly we are doing that for dolphins so you are starting to classify the entities that are there on the web of data and we are using the relations like a particular animal animal makes use of certain technique like sonar here so in order to provide answer to this query this human consumption layer or the machine consumption layer they are not sufficient we need to have something more on top of this and this something more we will involve the generic concept the abstract concepts in the world so for example the animals under animals you have got mammals right and the bats they come under say mammal as well as animals right and if the bat comes under mammal they will come under animal by the rule of inference we can infer that right so we need to add another layer on top of this which is called the sense making layer which holds the semantics of the data that is represented in the web of data right and that is called the semantic layer or the sense making layer and of course we need to have connection between the web of data layer to the semantics layer and this is the third requirement to make the web smart or intelligent or semantic so in this course our primary points of discussion would be how to make the data or the information on the web machine processable basically how do we conceptualize a web of data like we have the web of documents what are the technologies that you can use to realize the web of data and if we have a web of data in place how we can add more abstraction of the data to make more sense making job while we are performing certain tasks over the internet and of course we will be discussing a bit on how we can uh, map these documents into the corresponding uh, data items in the web of data that part we will also cover but uh, that will not be uh, that uh, detail so that detail part that we will be covering will be the web of data conceptualizing the architecture and uh, dissecting the individual architectural element going detail into each of this that is what we are up to and how do we add semantic uh, layer on top of in this web of data and how do we do reasoning over the web of data now if we talk about deep level inference there are three ingredients that we need to have we need to have a mechanism to represent knowledge in the, of the world then we need to somehow represent the semantics of the web content basically the meaning of the web contents in a structured form and we need to have an inference engine or system that can create new knowledge out of the existing knowledge right and this is what exactly the ai scientists or the artificial intelligence 
intelligence scientists they are doing for ages and even the even before the WWW was born right so what we are intending to do here in the semantic way we are trying to take the artificial intelligence to the web scale so basically how do we reason over the web of data which will be in the huge scale and come up with solutions or answers to the questions or solutions to the problems the first proposal of the semantic web uh, was made by Sir Tim Berners-Lee while he was in the CERN lab and the first proposal was the semantic web uh, and uh, a draft of the I am not say draft of the proposal uh, the first public appearance of the semantic web proposal was made in scientific American I, I think I, I have added this in your reading assignment. You have you can go through this. This is a very nice document, the vision about the semantic web. But I'll tell you a, an interesting story concerning this proposal. Uh, the Sir Tim Bernard Lee was very much excited about this uh, uh, proposal uh, because he knew that the traditional web they it has got certain problems and if we add a semantic layer to that, we can have more meaningful services for the users. So he wrote a proposal and put that uh, on the desk of his boss. Uh, the boss just said it's interesting. And you know that if someone says that it's interesting, uh, the person is not really interested in that. So as simple as that. But uh, T. Werners Lee uh, fought for that. He created communities with other researchers, tried to persuade the other researchers around the world and at this point of time it is a uh, thing that is there over the, in, over the internet though we do not see it. I will discuss about this uh, at the later part, maybe the second uh, lecture, how we are uh, in the semantic web though we do not feel it. Right. So this is a, a reading assignment uh, for you. So uh, let us start surfing the semantic web. Uh, this uh, journey will be exciting. There are very exciting things to talk about. And let me tell you, uh, the technologies that I will be going to discuss, they are being used extensively by the big names. I will reveal that in the next uh, lecture. Right. So before uh, uh, closing this session, let me tell you about the course plan. Uh, we have an introduction module where we will be talking about uh, uh, the generic uh, architecture, the vision of the semantic web, the requirement of the semantic web. Then we will talk a little bit about uh, uh, the knowledge representation in traditional sense in artificial intelligence. Though I will not be uh, providing a very detailed account of this uh, because this is not the focus of this course and uh, mm, we, we will be talking about reasoning but not with first order logic this uh, and that has got a very specific reason and I will reveal that as we go forward but the most important uh, uh, topics that we will be discussing uh, will be the resource description framework that is basically the generic uh, uh, representation of data that uh, is that is powering uh, the common format of publishing or reading data in the semantic of web or web of data and we'll see different protocols different languages different sources of data so all these things we'll be talking about and uh, we talked about the sense making layer how to design a sense making layer how to Mm, uh, reason with the data that we are, we are having in the sense making layer that is what we we will be doing in the ontology engineering module uh, and finally we will have a short section on module on link data uh, because in the web of data we we are trying to link uh, data from one place to another place 
and we need to see uh, what are the kind of common languages vocabulary are, that are there so that uh, the community understands others data uh, very easily and as we have this web of data this web of data they spawned interest in other areas like uh, what interesting applications that we can think about for example the recommendation of products or uh, recommendation of books in the library uh, so these are very interesting applications of this web of data and also called the knowledge graph so we will see whether we can have a module on processing information network if time permits we will discuss the last module uh, on processing information network the grading policy as it goes uh, at this point of time so we'll have a module based uh, quiz so we'll be having four quizzes in total and they will be attributing to 80 percent of the uh, weightage uh, we will have a term paper presentation that will carry 20 marks uh, 20 percent weightage uh, and while i'll be talking about different topics in different modules i will keep on sharing interesting materials with you uh, so keep track uh, of, of those and uh, see what are the topics that interests you so you have to select a topic out of that and uh, make a video presentation uh, so online or video presentation on that and have to write a report on this uh, topic uh, the books uh, there are plenty uh, but primarily I will be following the first two books Foundations of Semantic Web Technologies by Pascal Hitzler, uh, Marcus uh, Coates and Sebastian Rudolph. The second book is The Semantic Web Explained. Uh, the first book is basically giving a uh, um, very coherent view of the technologies of the semantic web but the second book has got uh, the mathematical treatment of the uh, underlying theory of semantic web technologies uh, in addition these uh, addition to these two books we'll be using other books uh, for example handbook of semantic web technologies and uh, i'll i'll keep on uh, updating you as uh, we take certain concepts from certain books uh the course delivery platform as of now it will be microsoft teams uh there will be uh, online tests for these four quizzes and they would be delivered or uh, conducted either through microsoft teams or Moodle. and i request all of you to honor uh, follow the honor code uh, you maintain fair practice in online tests and of course honor the plagiarism rule while you are writing your term paper so thank you all uh, we will see you in the next lecture thank you very much